What is your view as to what situations rokers should currently have on their radar? Um, okay, well firstly, in my primary business, uh, our, our number one uh, product, I guess, is data finance. Uh, and we, uh, we deal a lot in our space with you know, corporate restructuring, turnarounds, um, you know, recapitalization, typically businesses that are going through a tough time. And we've never, it's never been a slower period than the last two years. I've been doing this for, you know, I got, you know, 30 years, I suppose, and I've never seen it this slow. Now, that, that's contrary to what uh, asset, you know, asset guys, equipment guys, and contrary to property people, but that's what we've seen. And the reason we've seen that is because the government has flooded the zone with, uh, with, with handouts, JobKeeper. You know, the banks have been, um, have given uh, moratoriums. And so companies are flush. If you look at the RBA data, um, you know, I haven't seen the latest data. The last time I looked, there was $270 billion sitting on balance sheets, both for people at home and, and businesses. And so what this has manifested itself in is zombie companies. Uh, companies that would have, in the normal course of business, had COVID not happened, would have, would have collapsed. And if you look at the insolvency data, you'll see that insolvencies are down by about 50% at least, if not more. So you've got zombie companies, and a classic example of this was ProBuild the other day. ProBuild collapsed, um, and uh, so company and, and ProBuild said to the press that they probably could have pulled the pin a couple of years ago. Well, why didn't they pull the pin a couple of years ago? Because they've been propped up. So that's that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about zombie companies. Now, what then happens is that companies that are suppliers to these zombie companies downstream, and in the case of a construction business, it's uh, it's subcontractors. Um, they're, they're copying it. Um, and so you then ask yourself, what are the opportunities for brokers? Uh, firstly, what should brokers have on their radar? They should have this, uh, this expectation that there are some companies that really, they've, they're like a patient on life support, you know, and, no, and, and the family hasn't signed the, the do not resuscitate. Uh, and then other, and so then you've got your customers are uh, continuing to trade with these businesses, and when when the crunch comes, they're they're suffering from uh, they're they're suffering uh, losses. You know, there's a lot of subcontractors out there are suffering losses, and so um, that's y your customers are going to suffer credit impairment as a result, either because um, you know their financials are going to reflect the fact that they've suffered losses, uh, they're going to fall into arrears with their statutory payments, so you're going to see ATO arrears, uh, and they're going to suffer issues in real, you know, that's, that's, that's sort of cosmetic stuff, they're going to suffer real issues in terms of sh being short of cash, they're going to come to the broker looking for redraws on their facilities to gear up on property again, and um, in some cases, there'll be some equity in the property and you'll be able to, to do that. You, may, you probably won't be able to go to the bank because the bank's going to uh, see the impairment. Um, and so you're going to need to, be, you're going to, need to uh, have your non-bank connections. And you're also going to look at, uh, you're going to need to figure out what you're going to do when those customers who've suffered losses because they've been trading with zombie companies, um, they're going to be, in some cases, wanting to redraw beyond the LVRs, and so you're going to need to have solutions uh, beyond just sort of maxing out the LVR because that's not going to be enough.